thankful that everybody came out to show our appreciation for these very special women that have worked in the community. Some have been toiling for a very long time. We have the Party Hannah Women's Center, Girls in the City, and the Neighborhood Assistance Office. And just want to thank you for everybody who come out to show our appreciation and to honor these beautiful women who do such a lovely job in the community. Some of them you heard of before, and some of them you may not have never heard of, but you'll get to know a little bit about them. And we're not going to prolong too much longer. We hope everybody had some refreshments. We hope you all comfortable. Um, I really appreciate everybody coming out. We have a really good turnout, and the consequence to that is we didn't have enough chairs. So I'm going to ask that the young adults, if you see a senior, and need a chair, that you bring in the chairs to the seniors or children. You can sit on the floor, but let's not allow our seniors to stand and let's make them comfortable. Is that all right? Yes. All right. So at this time, I'm going to ask, um, but we're going to pass over. I welcomed you, right? Everybody feel welcome? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And at this time, we're going to ask um, Evangelist Sharon Dawson to bring us a prayer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. Right now, we're about to have a prayer. We ask that you bow your heads. We ask that you refrain from moving, speaking at this time. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for how you allowed us to come together and to fellowship. We ask that you just come into the midst of this building, into this program, touch the ears and the hearts of your people. We ask that you comfort us, O oh God, whoever may be going through at this time. Let the message be going forth, O oh God, that we may receive what thus must be said, O oh God, that we may take it in, O oh God, and that we may go out and help someone else. We ask that you bless each and every one, those that will be singing, those that will be speaking, those that prepare the food, everyone that have taken part in this program, we ask that you send your blessing and anointing upon their lives and their ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. At this time, um, is Cynthia here in the building? Um, so at this time, we're going to have a solo from Cynthia Pierce.
know, we just um, got finished with, we just went through Black History Month. And you know, with Black History Month, you know, I look back and see the hard work that my ancestors did. And I look back and say, you know what, I have to continue to do what they've done. I have to make sure that I take care of all people who need to be taken care of. And now we're into Women's Month. And you know, I, I, I look at my list and I say to the honorees, congratulations, because of you, and I'm following behind in your footsteps, you paved the way for me to do what I need to do. You paved the way, you worked hard for me to do what I need to do. You know, women, and like, and like Kelly said, mothers, you know, we have so much on our plate. We have to work a job, we got to take care of our families, we got to take care of parents, because some of us are having parents that are older now. And we just, we, we try to look out for each other. And I, I believe, I belong to two women's groups. And what the women's group that I belong to is the same County 100 African American Women 100 Plus and the National Council of Negro Women. When I was raised, they said, when you belong to an organization, you're supposed to look out for them all the time. They're like your sisters. And so Women's Month March is, is, is important to me because I know sometimes how hard it is for us to, to be. And I know how hard it is that sometimes, you know, you need to um, have, say hi, how are you today? You need to show other women you know, is everything okay? You know, you you need to call me, pick up the phone, and give me a call. And so that's why I say, with the women that I see on this list, they paved the way for me. But I also, I've been on a journey. And you know what, I didn't know I've been on a journey until everything I do. And I find sometimes, you know, people try to take your spirit from you. I remember, I remember when, when my son came out of high school and they said to me, why are you still being involved, Ruby? You don't have no children no more in the system. Yes, I do. I got 25,000 kids in the system that I need to look out for. I got my grandson. I did. Not all parents can come out, and it's not because they don't want to come out. Sometimes they're just not able. You know, they're working two jobs. They're working three jobs. So be happy when you have someone like a Ruby Cotton who wants to be on your home school council, who wants to be part of your PTA, who wants to be on the leadership team at the high school, who wants to be to make sure the special ed children get what they need. So I say, we as women, we have a long road. But you know what? There's women, there's a lot of us out here who cares about each other, who wants to make sure, you know what? I'm going to look after you. When I tell people, about when your children in school, it's not just your teacher you've got to make sure you stay in touch with. I always consider the custodian. I consider the cafeteria worker. I consider the security guard because they're the ones too who's looking after your children. You know what? When you see my one over here, you know you pull them on the side. Um, and I just want to say a little story. Uh, my mom lived in Presidential Boulevard and I was on the elevator the other night and um, two young girls, they're only like 16 or 17, and they cussing and they gonna beat up somebody and, and whatever. And I said to, and so her friend is trying to say to her, don't do that. And so I said to her, I said, one mistake can cost you a lifetime of vision. And I said, no, do not do, do not do that. She looked at me and said, I'm not talking to you. And I looked back at her and I said, but you know what? I'm talking to you. But I'm trying to tell you that you need not to. And so, you know, I think this road, and I can't help myself from doing that because, I, I, you know, I'll stop kids and I'll tell them, you know, don't do that. You can't do that. Pull your pants up. Don't do that. But I think that this, this road that I've been on with being part of the school, Logging to my women's group, that it has, I, I know what it feels. You know, I know what, what people now need to know. They, they want to call someone. They want to reach out and say, you know, I, at least I can call uh, Ms. Cotton. She understands. She know what I start to mean a little. Sometimes, you know, if you're going to represent people, you have to feel what they feel sometimes. You know, and I know what it is to have. A, a, a family member incarcerated. You know, I know what it is to have 
brothers died from the HIV. You know, I know what it is to have a mom who is in dementia. So when you call someone, sometimes I find they need to feel what you feel. This way they can, you can, I can talk to you. They, you know what, I believe that then, okay, you can understand how I feel and you're gonna do your darndest to help me what I need to be helped. So that's why I look at March as Women's Month, but I, every month to me is Women's Month because I'm gonna try my best, I do all the time. Uh, help with it. just give them that smile, just say, how are you doing today? Uh, is there anything that I can do for you? So I would just like to say to the people, to you out there, you know, I am running for fourth board. I believe my journey has warned me. I believe, I didn't know that I was going to do this until Councilwoman uh, Ames here kept asking me, do you want to? But also the female, we need that female feeling, you know. Sometimes you know you talk to people and, and you can look you can look at them and you can see that they're not look, listening to you. Just from their eyes you can see that they're not paying attention. So, but I just uh, feel that uh, we as women uh, need to be more kinder to each other. You know, sometimes we say harsh things and we, we really don't mean it. But you know, we got to practice. Uh, we you know we have to practice women. March all, all year. I practiced it all year. Coming from uh, my mom, who, who taught me at an early age uh, how to take care of my brothers and sisters. I learned how to cook when I was about nine years old. And my family now is kind of like upset because I can't cook like I want to cook now because I'm, I'm campaigning. But my son used to say, he'll call me and say, Mom, you going to cook dinner tonight? I say, I, I don't know, Ed. But, but, you know, my mom and my aunt, who, who was a sharecropper's wife, and I saw how she she cared for her, she loved her children. She had six kids. She took care of my mom, five kids. She had a total of 11 children that she had to look after. But she cared. I looked at my grandma, who, who, who brought me in the kitchen and said, I'm going to teach you how to make sweet potato pie and, and how to make cornbread. But, you know, that's what we need to do for each other. We need to just care. You know, if you got somebody there that care, I think that things would be a lot better, but a lot of people just don't care. But I can say that for Ruby, I care because I know what it is to have the feeling and the hurt and um, everything. So what I would like to do when I get there is some things I have on the table. Uh, and the first thing is do my 24-hour hotline where you will be able to reach me. You know, I believe that once you get elected, it's not Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. You know, you do need to call someone. You call someone on the weekend if that's what it's needed. Do my darn is to work with the administration, to work with the department chair. There's so many codes and orders that are not being enforced, and I'm, I'm going to look into all of them. If we can just improve the quality of life a little, a quality of life a little, and I think the, the more you do it, the more it'll get better. Uh, also, uh, what I would like to do too is um, bring in some people, some young college kids, to help me. Uh, this way, it'll look good for them on their resume because you got to remember, if you've got 30 or 40 people you're dealing with at one time, you need the college, you need some interns, and this way. They can then move forward and go work for the state, go work for the federal government, because they have some kind of, on their resume, you know, I work for a city council person. But I believe, you know, I know that Ruby Cotton, and you know it, I'm, I'm going to say my, my own, but what I'm going to do too is, I'm just going to move forward, forward. We're going to move forward, not talk about nothing, we're just going to go forward. And I would like to end with, but my slogan, I got to tell you my slogan. Yes. And, but you'll never be forgotten when you vote for God. <laughs> I know what they try to do to us and I know what
they try. You know, you don't have anybody in your corner. They don't do anything to us. But I just wanted to bring her up. Just because I was there this morning. And um, it was joyful. It really was joyful. So I just wanted, I wanted her to tell you, not me. I wanted her to. Oh. I've been good all day until I hear you talk about it. God is good.
amazing and divine. God chose me to be the bearer of mankind. With class and grace, I have struggled, yet I maintain in the race. On a plantation with Monsa, no rights, no forms, no freedom, and no choice. However, like a queen, we went down by the river to worship and lift up our voices. Yeah. We sang about our pain and disdain, and we prayed about our weary tears. They, 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 they took our children. They broke the spirits of our men. Sick and disgustedly, they violated us day in and day out, over and over again. But God gave us the strength to move on. All right.
the queens in the head. We once was in the back of the buses, in the back of the kitchen, in the back of the food. Paul told women should be quiet in the church, but the queens in the head. We told, for God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We took, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. I am amazing and divine. God chose me to be the bearer of mankind. With class and grace, I have struggled yet maintained in the race. What a historic place and time. Our 44th president, a black man, and yes, me, the daughter of a Baptist preacher, singing before the world. Uh,
We just want you to know that Heart of Hannah Women's Center, we've been around for a while. We're not fly by night. We've been in existence since 2000. Um, and we've been toiling for a long time. However, God has been so good for, to us and merciful toward us. We're housed right out of the Hispanic Center. We have been there for 10 years um, at the Hispanic Center over on 45 East 21st Street. And we just want to say thank you to Maria Magda for allowing us to be here. Our Atlanta Women's Center, we provide support groups. We do healing through drama. We do four major productions throughout the year. We've been off Broadway um, in New York nine times. Come on. Right. We had nine shows um, in the theater district um, in Manhattan. And like I said, we've been around for a while. Our support groups are for women. They're for girls. We have a domestic violence support group. Um, we have a girl support group. And we have other services. We are a network resource and support service for women and children. And so we just want to thank you for coming out, spending time with us as we recognize and we honor the women. Some of the women we have personal relationships with. Some of the women we know from the community. Some of the women you may know, you know, they may have worked with you and your family members. But we just want to take this time out and acknowledge them and the work they did. And we actually took the time out to find people in history to fit the personality or the character or the contributions that that person had given on the program. And I did leave a very important name out on that program. I pray that she forgive me. This is our first award ceremony. And so just have patience with us and be merciful for us, with us if we've done anything that's inappropriate. But I think we pretty much got it down. So at this time, we're going to move forward. And we're going to begin with our first award. And we, want, we didn't want to just honor, we want to honor all age groups, all generations. And we want to begin with our first award with the Debbie Allen Award, which is going to Tiffany Brown.
Madonna impressed me. She came to our, <laughs> she came to our cable show. We had a series um, about the violence in the city. And Madonna, she is um, in the business of, I don't want to say funeral business, because she corrected me. What is the correct word? Practitioner of mortuary science. All right. <laughs>
and you can see some of the dot org, dot org, <laughs> and see some of the work that she does.
I was an elected official the first time in history, so I have a big history for women especially. But a woman needs a man always in her side to guide her and to direct her. I was all alone, no man in my side, but I, I was very proud. Yeah, but I was very, very proud of everything I accomplished. Uh, one day when it's more time, I will explain to you all the programs that I have at the Hispanic Office Service Center. We've been in services for 35 years. My sister Ames, my sister Ames, she knows that we work together. Jackson and all the women work very together at the uh, council meetings and in the city of Paris. Before I, you, before I leave, I want you to know that a woman is very important in a man's life because we are there, there are the children as a man to follow and to be our example. I want to thank you so much and congratulations to She is my friend, she is uh, my sister in life in Christ. You are my brothers and sister in Christ. Period. I'm here to serve you anytime I need you. Need to. Shabani. Shabani. 
Shivani Stewart. These teachers are very, very special. They work out of School 21, and what makes them so special? When the kids graduate from school, in particularly girls, girls and boys, they take the time out and work with these youth throughout high school. Now these are elementary school teachers, but they give up their own resources, their own money, their own time, they help them find jobs, they help them get in programs, they keep up with them. That's why it's important to have teachers that care about their students, because they go to the extra yard. You know, it was funny because I thought, when we thought about this award, I don't know if anybody went to school 13, but it was Ms. Wolfel, it was Ms. Davenport, it was Ms. Jenkins, it was Ms. Tommy. We thought it was easier to find them than to find them. <laughs>
We just don't got you on here. And so I'm going to print you another one with your name on it, and I'm going to mail it to you.
working with grandparents at this time. A very wise woman, and she got something to say if you listen to her worthwhile to hear. <laughs> and she gave it to you so sweet. And so we just want to thank you, Dr. Dixon, for taking the time coming out to receive this award. And thank you for being a pearl in the city. Thank you. Thought you had a hurricane. Mm -hmm. What well, all that stuff. 
Thank you to everybody that came out. I hope you had a good time.